Hello, my name is Raphael Chatrou. I'm a fine arts specialist at Freeman's. I'm specifically involved with American art, and that's why I'm here today to present to you several highlights upcoming in our uh, sale featuring fine art from the estate of Angela Gross Falk on September the 20th in Philadelphia. Behind me, you have three examples of the work of Charles Frederick Ramsey, one of the most innovative, daring modernists from uh, the New Hope art colony, except he's not uh, one of the most known artists of that group because he was foreshadowed by the New York avant-garde at the time. Um, what's interesting, however, is that uh, his work is quite rare and is becoming recognized now on a national stage. So look at some of those examples behind me. And through them, you'll understand how uh, important a figure he was in New Hope in the 30s. Charles Frederick Ramsey was the son of an important Philadelphia painter of still lives. Uh, they both trained the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts, but Charles Frederick had a taste of the abroad because he spent many years in Paris, and especially under the mentorship of Adolphe Bouguereau and Jean-Paul Laurence. Well, you can see that the style of the paintings behind me are quite different from that of those mentors, and that's because in the late 20s, early 30s, Ramsey explored abstraction, especially because he was influenced by the work of Arthur Carls, with whom he worked during World War I, but also by the work of Mike Evans, a newcomer in New Hope, who introduced him to the work of Fernand Léger, as well as Pete Mondrian. It's quite telling in those works. We'll start probably with this one, the earliest, which is called Chatter, and which depicts three figures caught in a moment of conversation. While you might expect a lot of agitation and dynamism in this scene because of the title, you actually see flattened shapes and a very sort of poised composition that contrasts directly with the subject. Here you can tell that uh, Ramsey is influenced by the work of the New York avant-garde, but also some of the European as well, as the bold colors are very carefully limited to small um, spaces and contours, which help with the overall design and patterning of the work rather than just the subject itself. He goes more radical with the two works on either side of the main one, um, and here explores a theme of symphonism, which is again influenced by the New York avant-garde. The idea here is to try to describe a parallel between music and painting, between color and sound. And here Ramsey is trying to show that we create a painting with color, just like we create a symphony with sound. So that's his attempt at combining those two elements, which is quite telling when you know that Ramsey himself was quite into uh, jazz music. Specifically about those two paintings, you see a lot of geometry, which is the new element uh, distilled into his art. It's not just about color, it's about flattened shape, it's about geometry. And what you see here is the artist's attempt at creating an aesthetic of perfection with a ratio of diminishing squares that overall contributes to the beauty of the work. On my left, you have an abstract supposed to represent a city. It is called Cityscape. And on the right, you have one of the most important work known by Ramsey, which was featured in his retrospective in the early 50s in New Hope. It's called 36-2. And you can clearly see the influence of Mondrian because it's just small dips of very vivid colors trapped into a pattern. The overall flatness of the composition makes you focus on the design again, rather than just the subject itself. And that's his attempt again to reconcile music, color, and painting all together. So check out for more information about this artist and the other works featured in the sale on September the 20th, again in Philadelphia.